Head mm. fake or? Mm. 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 Yeah. Look, it was an interesting day. If you look at the 10-year, uh, essentially yields back up again. We're, you know, 15 bips off those scary heights. But if you think about what today was, it was it was strange. You had a day when equities probably should have responded to higher rates. You had a day when or a day after big moves in oil and things that have been rolling the markets. But if you look at the S&P, I, I continue to think uh, the market dynamics are very interesting coming off that reversal that we made on that payroll low about seven sessions ago. Uh, and again, it was a day when it looked like yields were going to go higher and that was going to sell off equities and equities have responded. I, I still think there are reasons why equities should be having problems with higher yields. But I think the dynamics around a more benign Fed, uh, again, we've had a lot of Fed speak. The reality is we know higher for longer. Uh, we also are hearing from banks and we're not hearing about a deterioration in credit yet. Um, it's enough for equities in a seasonal dynamic that I think works. But again, we're almost 4% off those lows. Dan, if a year ago someone had said to you the 10 year is going to be at 4.7 and stocks are going to be where they are, would you believe them? No, not really. And, and the other point I'd just add to that is, you know, you have crude oil at 87 bucks. You have the right. U.S. dollar index at 106. You have, again, um, you know, a lot of inflationary inputs that are kind of, and guys been hinting at this for months and months, that are just really staying pat. So the idea that the Fed is going to get inflation down down to 2% anytime soon or whatever that target is, however you measure it, it doesn't seem likely to me. So again, that's why I think stocks here, you know, in and around this 43, 50 range are, are kind of curious to me, especially when you consider the fact that two years ago, they were basically trading at the exact same spot when interest rates were far lower. The last point I'll just make is over the weekend, every time I opened the Wall Street Journal, uh, at least.com, I saw this article just kind of pointing at me. It said a recession is lo no longer the consensus. With a quarterly um, survey, they do economists. It's fallen below you know, 50 percent. So I just think the lower that that probability of a recession gets is the higher likelihood that we're probably, probably will be a recession. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and that stocks are kind of topping out. But Tim has been on this trade for the last couple of weeks thinking that just seasonally, like, you know, the kind of natural progression might be higher. A two handle move lower in the VIX to me suggests that the market was waiting for something cataclysmic to happen over the weekend. Now, I want to be clear what's happening is cataclysmic. But in terms of what we look at, the market Nothing happened to sort of suggest the market should cascade lower. So I think that was part of it. Again, I want to be careful with my words because we all understand what's happening is awful. So that move to me, it speaks to what I think what people were positioned for. I think it's a positioning thing. But with that said, you can't underestimate the strength and the resilience of this market. We're 4,400 in the S&P. And to answer your question, absolutely not, I didn't think the S&P would, would be. I would have thought it would be pushing down towards at least 3,800, if not lower. Yet here we are within whisper, well, within 10% or so of an all-time high. Yeah, a year with 10% of an all-time high and, and very close to 5% on the 10-year bond. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we've all kind of been speaking to the dynamics between yields and equities, and like that doesn't really seem to hold up. I think really what happened was we saw at least the preliminary bank earnings come out. Those came out positive, and we tend to kind of extrapolate what's going on with the banks and, 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 and extrapolate that to the economy. So that's why you saw more or less the economically more sensitive pockets of the market rally like you did today. I would, I would argue that we should probably rethink that line of reasoning. I think now with the, the, the banks are with the banks essentially essentially being, a, you know, a barometer call the of tune. economic the strength. I just the think there's a lot of a lot of things that have changed. We've spoken about some of the geopolitical risks, but I think the situation that we have here is that we are starting to see higher credit card balances, likely deteriorating credit. So this Goldilocks situation, not to mention when's the last time that we've had rates of this situation? Like it's like you can't remember it. We've had not, free not money. We've had for free money for the better part of 15 years. So with QT and you're also seeing what's happening on the back end of the Treasury in terms of the issuance that we continue to have. You know, I just think it's a matter of time before you start to see this trickle down effect. And the fact that we've accepted higher for longer, I would argue that that's more of a recent phenomenon, which is why you've seen rates move. We've fought the Fed all the way here. And we're finally starting to sing and dance together. And I think it's just a matter of time before that song and dance changes the tune of what the market is doing.